Hi there, my name is Missy Carpenter and my company is called Traditional Primitives and I would like to show you how I am basting English paper piecing a different way. I'm using starch and freezer paper basically and it works really great. So let me show you my notions here that I'm using. I've got premium freezer paper. Um, I've got this brand going because um, it has good qualities. It, it doesn't shrink like most other freezer papers that are on the market. So you do have to make your own shapes, but you can use them over and over and over. Um, it doesn't shrink and distort near as fast as others. So I've counted 20 times and stopped counting, um, and it just keeps on working, so it works really great. So then I'm also using regular starch. This is just starch that we use on our laundry to get out the wrinkles. And I put that starch in the handle of my starch brush. You can see it sloshing in the handle there. So this is just a great way to keep it handy. Um, you can take it with you as you go. Um, and the starch brush is just a great little tool. I also have a fingertip stiletto on my finger. It is adjustable here to reach around different size fingers, knuckles, and fingertips. So you can squeeze this or open it up as needed. And it is bent uh, similar to the fingertip. So that's why it's called the fingertip stiletto. It uh, works very easily. It's easy to get used to using because you are basically using it as you would your fingertip, so it's real easy to use. You don't lose it, doesn't fall off, it's very comfortable to use. Uh, let's see, I've got the uh, portable pressing mat. Uh, it's really comfortable to sit at a table and do this versus standing at your ironing board. And then we also have the miniature iron. This one has nice crisp edges, so it works very well to help roll the fabric right over the paper. So I'm doubling up my freezer paper <clears throat> because I want it to be stiff. You can see that these corners are stiff and they're not bending. I don't have to really be careful when I'm doing this. I can go very quickly without worrying about these corners bending because of that double layer. But the brand of paper works well because of that shrinkage that I mentioned earlier. So we can reuse this paper over and over. So to get this shape of the diamond, I, in my patterns, I have a template for whatever shape you're, need, you're needing, um, whether it be a hexagon, which is in the quilt straight behind me, that is life in the Midwest, or a diamond, which is in a warm welcome. And then this block right here on the table is from the Gardens of a King. So this is one of those blocks in that quilt, and it uh, is very unique in its shapes. So I've got the template pattern right in the pattern for you. Uh, you just print it off on one sheet, then you put two shiny sides facing down on two sheets of paper and iron them together. And then you would cut it out right on the line. So it's not a lot of work, it's similar to preparing for applique. So I'm gonna be doing a hexagon for you today. So I have doubled up that um, layer of, of paper, <clears throat> excuse me, and cut out my paper shape. And now I'm gonna just squeeze slightly on the brush and the starch starts to come out. So you can know that it's on the fabric because it gets darker. And most of the time I try to paint on the outside of the seam allowance and then let it soak in towards the paper and the papers will last longer. Now when we start, we're gonna just iron this in place. I don't want your iron to get outside that paper on this first seam. So stop the iron right there at the paper. That keeps the next one soft and flexible and see how fast it folds over. So again, each time I'm not going to get that next seam you have to dry, I'm not going to get it dried until I'm ready to fold it over. So as you see here, it's very quick and very precise. Look at those nice sharp corners. Now when I fold this last one, and one more thing, I can tell you just to hold this seam allowance with the fingertip stiletto. That keeps it right in place. And then on the very last seam, I always want to tuck in my first seam, just making sure that it's tucked right up next to that paper. We just want to make sure everything is dry and look at that precision hexagon. So it works really great. You can fussy cut very easily by, uh, as you see on that one, by following the um, design on the back side of the fabric that you see. Uh, when you want to piece these together because you kept everything nice and close to the paper, everything fits together just perfectly. So that's my method of starch basting. I have a blog. Um, you can find that on my website at traditionalprimitives.com. 
uh, find the blog through that website and see still pictures if you need to see it, see it uh, with still pictures. And otherwise, I have all of these supplies ready for you on my website at traditionalprimitives.com. Thanks. Hope you enjoy the technique.